on. If a sufficient number of people who wanted to stop war really did gather together they would first of all begin by making war upon those who disagreed with them. And it is still more certain that they would make war on people who also want to stop wars but in another way. And so they would fight. Men are what they are and they cannot be different. War has many causes that are unknown to us. Some causes are in men themselves, others are outside them. One must begin man himself. How can he be independent of the external influences of great of his machine, man cannot be free, he cannot govern himself and he will always remain a slave, and the plaything of the force is acting upon him. This is why in all ancient teachings the first demand at the beginning of the way to liberation was, know thyself. We shall speak of these words now. The next lecture began precisely with the words, these words, said G, which are generally ascribed to Socrates, actually lie at the basis of many systems and schools far more ancient than the Socratic. But although Modem thought is aware of the existence of this principle it has only a very vague idea of its meaning and significance. The ordinary man of our times,
and even forgets about it. Observation stops. It is clear from this that only one thing can go on, either observation or attempts at analysis. But even apart from this, attempts to analyze separate phenomena without a knowledge of general laws are a completely useless waste of time. Before it is possible to analyze even the most elementary phenomena, a man must accumulate a sufficient quantity of material by means of recording. Recording, that is, the result of a direct observation of what is taking place at a given moment, is the most important material in the work of self-study. When a certain number of records have been accumulated and when, at the same time, laws to a certain extent have been studied and understood, analysis becomes possible. From the very beginning, observation, or, recording, must be based upon the understanding of the fundamental principles of the activity of the human machine. Self-observation can without knowing these principles, without constantly bearing them in mind. Therefore ordinary self-observation, in which all people are engaged all their lives, is entirely useless and leads nowhere. Observation must begin with the division of functions. All the activity of the human machine is divided into four sharply defined groups, each of which is controlled by its own special mind or center. In observing himself a man must differentiate between the four basic functions of his machine, the thinking, the emotional, the moving, and the instinctive. Every phenomenon that a man observes in himself is related to one or the other of these functions. Therefore, before beginning to observe, 
A man must understand how the functions differ. What intellectual activity means. What emotional activity means. What moving activity means. And what instinctive activity means. Observation must begin from the beginning. All previous experience, the results of all previous self-observation, must be laid aside. They may contain much valuable material, but all this material is based upon wrong divisions of the functions observed and is itself wrongly divided. It cannot therefore be utilized, at any rate it cannot be utilized at the beginning of the work of self-study. Begins to observe himself, he must 